Hi everybody and welcome to the latest vodcast from Honors Biology and Desert Ridge High School. I'm Mr. Galladay and today we're going to be talking about the inheritance of blood types. So all the different blood types that you've probably heard about A, B, A, B, and O and all the positive and negative stuff that goes along with that uh, is what we're going to be learning about today. So this is a good point to update your table of contents in your notebook and update your organization. Uh, and pause if you need to. Here we go. Uh, to understand how we inherit blood types, uh, it's first a little bit necessary to understand about what a blood type is. Uh, and in order to understand what that is, you first need to understand a little bit about uh, substances called antigens and antibodies. Uh, antibodies, of course, are um, little uh, proteins that are uh, our immune system makes in response to an antigen. And antigens are either proteins or sometimes sugars that are on the surface of uh, cells or uh, which could be bacteria or viruses or anything that our body recognizes as an invader. So an antigen uh, broadly defined is anything, uh, it's a protein or polysaccharide that's on the surface of a cell uh, and that causes antibodies to be produced by our immune system. Uh, you could think of them antigens as sort of like ID badges uh, that uh, allows a cell to be recognized. All of our cells in our body have these ant uh, have um, ID badges. You could think of they're ways that our immune system uses to recognize uh, our cells and distinguish our own body cells from. Uh, the cells of bacteria or other invading cells. So antibodies, on the other hand, are the proteins that our immune system uh, uh, produces in response to antigens. Uh, you could think of antibodies as sort of like handcuffs. Uh, they have um, a binding site, which is sort of like an active site on, a, uh, on an enzyme. Uh, but the binding site basically just sticks to an, a specific antigen. It also is sort of like a lock and a key. So the antigen, it would be a protein that is on an invading cell, such, such as a bacteria. Uh, and then the antibody has a, uh, a sticky part that will bind specifically to that particular antigen. Uh, to get this straight, antibodies are the substances that are the proteins that our immune system makes in response to an antigen, and an antigen is an antibody generator. Okay, so that's uh, to understand our immune system and, and how uh, these blood types are, you have to understand what these antibodies and antigens are, uh, and that's because the surface of our blood cells, as well as all of the cells in our body, has uh, different types of surface proteins. Um, and as I said, those surface proteins, part of the function of those is to recognize uh, our own internal uh, system of ID badges, if you will. So um, we won't make an antibody that, that is uh, that is a, that in response to our own antigens, okay? So if you have A-type blood, what that means is you have little A-shaped proteins. Now, they're not really shaped like A's, uh, but you could think of them that way. They have that particular shape, these little proteins that are on the surface of all of our body cells. If you have B-type blood, it means you have B-type proteins on the surface of your blood cells. If you have AB blood, it means you have both of these, both A and B proteins. If you have O type blood, it doesn't mean it means that you don't have either A proteins or B proteins. Now, to be sure, you have other types of proteins on the surface of your blood, just not A proteins and not B proteins. These, it turns out, are the most problematic proteins um, uh, in in blood transfusions and in, in keeping people from accepting blood transfusions. That's why they are uh, the most well known. But we have lots and lots and lots and lots of these uh, these surface proteins on uh, our blood cells and all of our body cells. Okay, so if you have type A blood, that means you have type A proteins on the surface of your blood cells. If you have type B blood, that means you have type B proteins on the surface of your blood cells. If you have type AB blood, it means you have both type A 
and type B proteins. If you have type O blood, um, you, you do have surface proteins, you just you don't have either A or B proteins. You don't have either of those particular types of proteins on the surface of your blood cells. So what that means is if you receive some B type blood, if you receive a, a B transfusion and you have A type blood, that means your immune system will make anti-B antibodies, right? The B proteins will serve as an antigen and your immune system will produce anti-B antibodies. On the other hand, if you have type B blood then uh, and you receive some type A blood in a transfusion, in response to those type A proteins, your immune system will recognize that as an invader and you will produce anti-A antibodies. If you have type A and type B blood, or I'm sorry, if you have type AB blood, you won't produce either an A or a B antibody. Uh, that's because those are both part of your cell, so you're not going to produce a, a, an antibody um, that will essentially handcuff your own uh, your own blood cells. If you have type O blood and you receive either a B, a B type transfusion or an A type transfusion or an AB transfusion, your uh, immune system will produce both anti-A antibodies and anti-B antibodies. Okay, so um, a lot of antis uh, and antibodies and uh, things in there, but if you can keep that straight um, then you'll have no trouble understanding the, the inheritance of this. Let's just review just a little bit more um, to, to see what that means. If you have type A blood um, and you produce anti-B antibodies, notice that the B antibodies don't bind to those A blood proteins. Okay, So you've got uh, uh, your blood cells are, are flowing through your arteries and your veins and your capillaries uh, and you also have uh, potentially some anti-B antibodies but they don't uh, they don't bind they don't clump um, on the other hand if you had type A blood and you had anti-A uh, antibodies uh, then the link these links are formed um, which forms which causes your blood cells to sort of form this clump this is in fact how they test for uh, your blood type um, is they will mix your uh, blood with some type A uh, antibodies. If it clumps up and it sort of forms the consistency sort of like cottage cheese, uh, then they know that you have A proteins on the surface of your blood cells. If it doesn't clump up, then they know that you don't have type A um, proteins on the surface of your blood cells. And they'll test this with both uh, A antibodies and B antibodies. Um, and then depending on which ones your, your blood cells clump up with, that will, uh, that will allow us to, to understand whether you have A blood, B blood, A, B blood, which would mean that both A and B antibodies clumped up, or type O blood, which means that neither of them uh, cause your blood cells to clump up. Okay, so here's some um, review questions I'd, I'd like you to think about and answer these on the left-hand side of your notebook. So let's imagine a person with type A blood who has anti-B antibodies. What's going to happen if that person receives a type O transfusion? Okay. Next thing I'd like you to think about is imagine a person with type B blood. Okay. What would happen if that person receives a type AB transfusion? Okay. So this is AB blood. What if, if AB blood is given in a transfusion to a person with type B blood? Okay, next uh, question is type AB blood. Um, this type of blood is sometimes called the universal recipient. Okay, what I want to know is why. Why is AB blood called the universal recipient? Um, next thing is type O blood, which has no surface proteins. Why would type O blood be called the universal donor? Okay. Okay, so answer those on the left-hand side of your notebook. We will be discussing the answers to this in class, uh, but be sure that you uh, write down some answers to those questions. Okay, so uh, in order to understand the, the inheritance of these, how these different blood types are inherited, 
we have to understand what we mean by a multiple allele. And in a multiple allele um, inheritance pattern, as, as you might recall, uh, one gene has three or more different versions or different alleles. This is called multiple alleles. Uh, we saw this in the fur color of rabbits, uh, and the same type of uh, system applies in our blood types. Um, there are actually three different alleles at work here. Um, the ABO blood group uh, is determined by three different alleles. We have an IA, which stands for immunoglobin type A, IB, which stands for immunoglobin type B, and the little i, which is the recessive, um, the recessive form. So the alleles and the phenotypes they're associated with, the IA allele is associated with type A blood, the IB allele is associated with type B blood. If you have type AB blood, you have both of these alleles, the IA and IB, so that means that you would be heterozygous for that. And if you have type O blood, you would have both of the recessive little i alleles. So the type O is recessive uh, and uh, the AB is a, um, a heterozygous condition. Okay. The other thing that we have going on here, in addition to multiple alleles, is also codominance. Um, so the human ABO blood group is, a, um, is an example of something called codominance. Remember, uh, our, our new definition of dominance is that if it's present in the genotype, it shows up in the phenotype. So we have at, what codominance means is you have two dominant alleles. Both the A allele is dominant and the B allele is dominant. Okay, so codominance occurs when the phenotype associated with each allele is expressed in a heterozygote. Okay, so if in a heterozygous condition where I have the A allele and the B allele, that is going to cause me to have both A and B alleles expressed because the B allele and the A allele are both dominant. They're codominant. That means that they're present in the genotype, so they show up in the phenotype. They show up in the blood pro in the proteins that are, are present on the surface of the protein. So the AB phenotype, the genotype is IA, IB. It's an example of codominance. Okay. So type A blood, you could have one of two different genotypes. You could either be homozygous, meaning you have both uh, alleles are the IA type. The other possibility is that you could be heterozygous with a little i allele. Right? The same thing could be true of the type B blood. This, uh, the AB blood is always heterozygous. You have an IA and an IB allele. And the type O uh, phenotype is always uh, homozygous. You have two of the recessive little i alleles. Okay, so the other thing that people often ask about with blood type is what's with this positive and negative stuff, right? So that's what we just talked about is what's called the ABO blood groups. But what about the positive and negative stuff? Well, the positive and negative stuff relates to something called the RH factor. It's called the RH factor because it was first discovered in studies using rhesus monkeys. This isn't rhesus like rhesus peanut butter cups. Uh, it's spelled very different. It's spelled with an RH. Uh, and so that's why it is called the RH factor. Um, positive, if you, are, if you have a positive blood group, that means that you test positive for the presence of the RH protein. That means you, you have the RH protein on the surface of your blood cells. Negative means that you test negative for that particular surface protein. Uh, you don't have that surface, president, uh, surface protein if you have a negative blood group. So um, the RH factor, or the RH protein, is a, is a simple Mendelian trait, uh, and it's inherited that way. So there are four possible genotypes. If you have the big R, big R, that means that you, uh, the, the big R allele, which is, uh, means that you would, would have the, uh, the RH surface protein, um, and that is a dominant allele. So if that's present in, the, in a genotype, shows up in the phenotype, meaning it shows up as a surface uh, protein. If you have both alleles are of the recessive type, that means that you do not produce that particular surface protein, and so you are Rh negative. Okay, so let's look at 
uh, some uh, some information about this. So what does it mean if I have type A, uh, A positive blood? Well, it means you have type A proteins on the surface uh, of the blood cell, and you also have RH proteins. So you could think of your blood cell as looking kind of like this. You have both the type A proteins, and you also have the RH proteins on the surface of your, uh, of your blood cells. So there are two different genes at work here. They're on two different chromosomes. Uh, so for one, you, you would have either the homozygous or heterozygous condition. Uh, and then the, for the RH factor, again, you have one of the dominant alleles, uh, which would give you that surface protein. What about if you have B negative blood? Well, uh, again, there are two different proteins happening here. One is the B proteins, the other which you would have. The other is the RH proteins, which you would not have. So your surface uh, proteins of your blood cells would look something like this, meaning you would have the B proteins on the surface of your blood, but notice there are no R proteins on the surface of, uh, of the B negative blood. So you have, um, for the two different genes, you would be heterozygous or homozygous for the, the B protein, uh, but you would be homozygous recessive for the RH protein. What if I have AB positive blood? Well, you hit the surface protein jackpot in that case. That means you have the AB, both the A proteins, and you've got the B proteins, and you've got the RH proteins. So look at all that stuff that you've got on the surface of your proteins. You've got A proteins, you've got B proteins, and you've got RH proteins all just kind of floating around there on the surface of your blood cells. Um, so what does that mean? Well, in terms of your genotype, we know this one. It's got to be big uh, IA, IB for the ABO group, uh, but for the RH protein, it could be either the heterozygous or the homozygous dominant situation. If you have O negative blood, on the other hand, what does that mean? Well, that means you don't have any surface proteins uh, of these of these particular groups on the surface of your blood cells. You do have others, just none of the AB and none of the uh, RH proteins. So there you are with this uh, smooth little blood cells uh, that don't have any of these uh, blood cells. Sort of like a plain pizza, there's your garbage pizza with your, your pepperoni B proteins and your anchovy A proteins and your I don't know what the R would be, rigatoni, I don't know, something. Uh, the R proteins on the surface of your blood cells. So the one nice thing, if you have O negative blood, then you would know for sure what your, uh, your blood uh, genotype would be. You would have little I, little I, and the little R, little R. So you would be recessive for both of those. Well, I think that explains everything that we need to know about blood types. Uh, so that's going to do it for this podcast, and this is uh, Mr. Galladay for Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School, and I hope you have a great day.